Hello, welcome to the Moto1.com test car happy hour. It is a very condensed version. We got a skeleton crew. <laughs> Everybody's in Europe doing fun things. Uh, but hey, I'm here with Chris Smith. Nice to be here. Great After rambling about you. cars, you know, you guys have, I think, slightly better intro music than we have on rambling. I just got to say. Yeah, Kyle found some real funky music for uh, for test car happy hour. I it's, like that music. It's upbeat. It kind of gets you going. Hey, what are we driving? What are we talking about? All of this good stuff. But like you said, Jeff, this week, everybody but you and me is they're in europe they're across the pond driving stuff so oh yeah next week i'm sure when seth and brandon and them get back with they'll have some amazing stuff to talk about based on what i've oh, yeah. what i've seen them posting so yeah that should be a fun episode but today we got two cars we're going to talk about the chevy silverado zr2 bison and the audi q8 E Sportback e-tron. I knew I was going to mess that up because Audi shouldn't have said it like that. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about those two cars. Maybe we'll talk about Smith. What your uh, what your some of those toys you got? You sure you're showing me before we started? Well, we were but, yeah. we were talking we were talking some okay we we're, were talking ZR2 Bison before we started, and it's like well, I've I've got some off roaders that I've been driving that are actually new to me for the first time in forty years or thereabouts. Maybe I'm dating myself. We can get that later. Let's let's get let's get with Audi. What do we got going on there? Oh, Audi. This is an interesting one. Uh, so the e-tron name in general has always been kind of confusing to me because when it came out the first time, um, it was just the e-tron, right? Mm -hmm. Like the original e-tron was just an e-tron. It wasn't a Q5. It wasn't a Q8. Finally, I feel like they've amended that naming structure a little bit. And uh, by giving the Q8 e-tron an official proper sort of designation so people know exactly where it fits in the segment. Mm -hmm. um, and Seth went and drove this, the regular version, uh, a few months ago. And he really liked it. So I've got the Sportback now. Um, and I really like it too. I don't love the Sportback design on this model. I don't... The, the, the crossover coupe in general is kind of like a dying trend to me. I think it was hot for a few years and now it's kind of falling off i don't think this car looks especially good with like that sporty back um but other than that it's a really really nice electric suv mm -hmm. um let's see some of the stats 114 kilowatt hour battery pack so not huge not like you know super small uh, 170 kilowatt hour fast charge or kilowatt fast charging excuse me um so again not like the fastest but pretty decent and then you get 296 miles of range with the Sportback, which is the only benefit uh, I can see over getting the regular version because that's an extra 11 miles of range, which is better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like four or five extra miles over the regular version, but it gets a decent amount more range. Uh, but still, 296 miles is like kind of on the lower end, especially with, with how many cars get over 300 and close to 400 now in this segment like i don't know it, it, it's it's really it's a really nice audi but as far as an ev goes it's like sort of middle of the pack for me in terms of just specs and features i mean on that front does it feel to you like it might be i hate to say compliance vehicle but it's like okay let, let's let's get an ev version of this going here it is i, I mean no i do you get that I think that uh, a good example of like early sort of an early adopter that feels more like a compliance vehicle is like the I-Pace mm -hmm. um, where it's still like really good, but the, but the specs are pretty bad. Um, they've amended that a little bit like Jag has recently with, with some of the updates, but this feels like a genuine EV you would consider on the top end, like as a big luxury sedan, because this thing is like not cheap, $88,000 to start. Um, 92 as tested with some of the features and, and the S line package and a few other things. So it is like a high end EV, but it doesn't really have the high end specs you would expect, especially when you have like lucid and, and, uh, you know, Cadillac, the lyric, like some of the, some of the nicer newer EVs have way more in terms of just overall, uh, range and range and charging, I guess is the biggest thing, because in terms of performance for me, like it's, it's pretty solid 400 horsepower. 496 pound feet of torque like it has decent giddy up it's just yeah it's it's missing some of the some of the impressive figures that you get on some of the other cars 
Well, let me let me back you up just a moment because I thought you had an astute observation talking about sport bag versus just the regular SUV. Um, range you say is a little bit better with the sport back. We're talking 11 miles. Mm -hmm. is, I mean, is that really a, a significant enough figure? I know, um, I know the sport back is supposed to, I mean, you have the aerodynamics first of all, but it's also supposed to convey a more sporty character, but in reality, you're losing some of the practicality that you want in a vehicle like this anyways. I, I mean, it, yeah. is, the, is the case for the sport back kind of disappearing at this point? Well, the good news for this model, at least, where a lot of other sport backs or crossover coupes, they really uh, like lose out on, on rear headroom and cargo space. You really don't lose that much. I don't have the figures in front of me, but sitting in front of sitting in the second row of the Q8 of the sport back is actually not bad. Like it doesn't feel like you're about to bang your head on the roof or mm -hmm. how you're going to have a hard time getting in. The, the entryway is pretty open to the, the trunk is definitely smaller, but it's not significantly small enough to where you wouldn't consider it just because of that. Like I think people who want the sport back definitely want the styling, but they're not going to miss too much in terms of cargo. The 11 miles is interesting because I think that, there are some other uh, cars out there that, depending on which spec you get, depends on the mileage. I think the i7 is a good example of that, um, and it's sort of close. I think I would have to I would have to go back and look, but you can get close to 10, 15 extra miles based on the based on the configuration, like different wheels or, mm -hmm. or different uh, does styling, whatever. I think 11 miles is pretty good, especially for how little range this thing gets already. Because I think under 300, you're like sort of stretched for for range as it is so that 11 extra miles i think sort of helps um but it's yeah it's not a huge bump it's just a little bit extra i think that you get that that might make it worth considering the sport back as opposed to the regular one well i mean it it certainly looks very very handsome inside i haven't had a chance to to jump into one of these yet um comfortable place inside jeff would you super would comfortable you yeah, the interior is really nice. Uh, it's it's a very basic like Audi interior, and I say basic as like every Audi interior is nice, you know. <laughs> right. uh, it's got the three screens, like the center touch screen, the lower screen for for AC controls. I don't love that, but it's one of the better, easier to use screens. And then it has the you know digital instrument cluster. It's a really nice place. I was actually I went to dinner last night uh, with my father in law and and my wife and. He was sitting in the back seat and we're just driving on the highway. And he's just like, This is a this is a nice, comfortable car. Like, and it is just it floats like it is an absolutely floaty, comfortable SUV when you're doing like 80 on the highway. It is just really nice. You and and of course, you know, the powertrain is totally dead silent. I don't know if there's actually a um like a faux sound that Audi projects in here. I haven't heard anything. Maybe I have to go into the settings. Maybe someone turned it off. Um, but it was, it was like deadly quiet driving on the highway last night. And I was pretty impressed with that. So yeah, it's a really, really comfortable car. The leather's super nice. Um, you get that matte wood finish sort of on top of the dash. That's really nice too, instead of the glossy stuff, which I like. Um, so yeah, overall, I, I really like it. I just wish it had a little bit better sort of specs in terms of range mm -hmm. and charging. And I plugged it in yesterday, which this is not an indictment of Audi necessarily, but uh, DC fast charging is 170, says Audi, and it was only charging at 80 kilowatts. Um, so that's probably an Electrify America issue um, after I went to an, at the second station because the first one was broken. So uh, I would say it's probably <laughs> yeah. an EA issue, but it's still disappointing to only see 80 and you're sitting there like, it's been so hot too in Florida. So I'm sitting there just at the charging station, just like drenched in sweat, waiting for this oh. thing to hurry up and charge. I mean, th there certainly there certainly is some issue right now with the charging infrastructure. It's I mean, it all needs to be addressed. Um, but yeah. I want to ask you, you made another comment that kind of struck me. You were talking about the faux sound. You couldn't detect any faux sound. Mm -hmm. um, the, the EVs that I've been in, I absolutely just there hasn't been a, a fake sound that I've appreciated. Never mind. Enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's just because my brain is telling me it's fake. Um, but I mean, have, 
are there any are there any EVs with the false sounds pumped through that you're like, yeah, this makes sense? So, uh, I mean, it's so funny to me that people are are very like anti acceleration sounds in EVs because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that really don't like them for whatever reason. While Lexus and BMW have been pumping in fake, you know, exhaust noises into the cabins of their gas cars for years, so uh, and not a lot of people have complained about that. So mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. I like the acceleration sounds on a lot of them. They they don't really necessarily have the same feel of like a gas car where you're just, you know, you it's an obvious like connection of your you're making the sound yourself when you when you hit the throttle. Like it's not a faux sound. The iX. Um, and the i4 M50 have a really like spaceship kind of sound, which I, I like in a weird way, but it doesn't sound natural. The EV6 GT weirdly has um, has a few different sound settings you can pick from. So you can do like a really futuristic sort of spaceship thing. And then they have one that's like a performance sound. And it it genuinely for a second, like when you're when you're slowly setting off, it almost sounds like a gas engine. Like you're you're almost tricked into thinking that it sounds genuine. And then once you start moving, you realize, oh, it's just, you know, a really fake sound. But I kind of like that one. Um, I think they're all pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely hear what you're saying there. And that's why I was asking and wondering, okay, is it is it just my brain telling me this this is a false sound? So you shouldn't be conditioned to like it because it's not real. Um I just there's there hasn't been anything that's really like struck me yet. Um, I definitely want to get inside some of these other vehicles and hot tip for all the listeners out there. Um, I'm fairly certain there's still at least one, maybe two YouTube videos of me like 15 years ago. <laughs> plug it, plug it in. Uh, they, they call them sound racers. They plugged in the cigarette lighter. And they pumped fake engine noise. You could huh. set, you could set, uh, you could set a, a radio station on the device, and then tune the radio station, and they would link up, and it would pump fake sound. So if you scout around on YouTube for, well, I would be driving a tour show at that point because it's me. <laughs> um, you might be able to find a V10 powered tour show. You might be able to find a V8 and not the third gen. Um, you might be able to find a V12. So. Fake sounds, they've been That's around great. for a while. Honestly, the V8 didn't sound bad at all. Yeah. Um, it just it did not mesh well with with the engine speed. If you had any sort of uh RPMs in the engine, it just it, it kind of it was like a video game, it would just kind of get to one point and just stay there. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely a little awkward. Jeff, I've got one more question I'd like to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're right, it's it's quite pricey. Um, at this price point, 85, 90 grand, if you're looking for uh, an electric crossover SUV, are you thinking about this car? Um, not necessarily, not for me. I think that you can do, you'll have, uh, the, I, the BMW iX is a very different vehicle than this one. It feels <laughs> like they went the totally futuristic, you know, EV. This is our EV. We want it to look like an EV and feel like an EV. And, and it really does. Um, and I like the iX a lot. And you can get a nicely loaded version for, you know, 100 grand. Uh, this feels like an Audi with a battery, which I also sort of like. Like, it's not trying too hard to be an EV, which I don't think, uh, I think we're sort of past that stage of EV adoption in general. Um, and I do like that. It just doesn't feel like, exciting outside of that it's a little bland it's a little plain super comfortable super nice to drive decently quick um, but then again the specs are like pretty low so i would say ix is still above this i would say even eqs maybe um i think there might i don't know the price difference between eqe and eqs in terms of like how it competes with this but i think the mercedes stuff is still a little bit ahead of this uh just overall i think they really mercedes really nailed it other than the design, which I really hate on those, but good otherwise. So it's yeah. tough. It's a tough segment. I mean, I think EV uh, SUVs in general have just gotten so popular in the last few years that there's just such tough competition out there. And like I said, the I-Pace was, was like one of the originals and now it feels dated. This has been around for a little bit as the e-tron and they updated it, but it still feels like it's lagging behind in some areas. So it's kind of a tough sell for me. 
Sure. And I mean, we're still, I, I think we get a little jaded in the work that we do, uh, but we're still in the very early stages of this whole EV SUV segment and EVs in general. And yeah. it's interesting to see how automakers are approaching it. And uh, I mean, there's going to be more evolution going forward. I mean, like, like you were saying with the whole e-tron nomenclature, I think a lot of automakers have maybe painted themselves into a little bit of a corner. We're going to come up with some catchy e-themed name to set aside yeah. our new electric vehicle from our, our combustion powered vehicle. But then as time goes on and everything is electric, Okay, now everything is going to have this kind of catchy e name, so we'll, we'll be seeing some evolu evolution going forward there as yeah. well. Yeah, for sure. What what uh, what else we got here? Well, so let's let's go from a uh, uh, super <laughs> luxurious EV to a big old truck, big a old big old truck, a, a big old dinosaur burning truck. Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison, basically the most extreme version of the Silverado you can get now in 2023. I guess this is a 2024 model. Mm -hmm. um, and it is like a really badass truck. I, I think that I've driven a lot of the newer big trucks recently. I just had the Silverado uh, 2500, which was pretty cool. I had the Raptor R before that, which is, I mean... The Silverado ZRT ZR2 is really cool. The Raptor R is a is a super truck. Like that is a different level of cool. Um, but but the ZR2 Bison does a really good job of just being like a a really capable, nice off road truck. Um, obviously, Florida we don't have a ton of great trails. Mm -hmm. Everything's flat. Um, but I took it out here to it's called Fakahatchee Strand State Park. It's like middle of the state if you go due west from Broward County. So it's it's got like decent trails, some, you know, little mud puddles and stuff like that. Nothing crazy, but it it really handles, you know, some of the tougher stuff pretty well. Um, let's see. Let's look at some of the stats. So 18 inch wheels, you get those big 33 inch Goodyear tires. Uh, you have five skid plates, which I think is two more than the standard ZR2. Um, and they sort of protect, they protect everything, including the differentials, the transfer case, the fuel tank. Um, and they used a, a hot stamped steel. I don't know how steel works really, but I guess it's a more, <laughs> a tougher version of steel yeah. that's, that protects it better. Um, multimatic shocks, uh, a degree better approach angle than the regular ZR2. So it's a little bit, it sits a little bit higher. And I think the that steel bumper at the front sort of cuts some of the some of the right. approach angle, and then 6.2 liter V8, 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, 10 speed automatic. It's uh, it's a pretty neat truck. I think the only area I was sort of disappointed was the powertrain, because you see what Ram is doing with the TRX, and you see what what Ford is doing with the Raptor R, and both of those two trucks are crazy powerful. Um, this is still pretty powerful, but it definitely does not even come close to the levels of of what those two trucks can do in a straight line. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, do you find a lot of people drawing comparisons between this and like, the, I mean, TRX and Raptor? I mean, I know this is this is Chevy's kind of if, if you want a, a big, burly off road focused version of our truck, this is this mm -hmm. is the top that you're going to get. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't have the same power. But I mean, suspension wise, off road wise, mm -hmm. is is it is it still there with TRX and Raptor? Yeah, it's super competitive off road wise. I mean, it has all the equipment you need: the suspension, the the tires, the skid plates, everything from the sheet metal down is amazingly good in terms mm -hmm. of how it competes with Raptor and TRX. I think the problem I have is so you have Raptor, right? The base Raptor, you have the I guess the Ram 1500 Rebel would be a good comparison for the regular ZR2. Um, and then you have the regular ZR2, but whereas Ford and Ram sort of went extreme with their next level, Chevy kind of went like a mid route where they're not doing the extreme power, but they're still doing the extreme suspension. So I think Chevy would tell you, and, I, and they're right in saying that this is not a high speed, you know, desert right. Baja truck like the Raptor is or the TRX even. Um, this is more of a rock crawler than those two. And I would, I would, say that that's probably true uh not having driven any of them on like moab or anything um but man i still wish there was just like a little more power like put it that's put a, that's the i mean that that's the vice right 
Yeah. You you get a little bit more power after a while. I want a little more power. And then I after know. a while, I want a little more power. And the next thing you know, you have an 800 horsepower truck. Well, um, 420 horsepower, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago is like a lot. Oh, yeah. Now, now all these trucks have 700 horsepower and you're looking at this and you're like, all right, you still got way more room to go in terms of power if you want to catch up to those guys. But yeah, it's a it's a tough. I don't know. Like, what do you do if you're Chevy? Do you just put a crazy engine in there to, to appease people or do you do what you probably I mean, the last right time from... last time I checked, there's a there's a supercharged engine with 650 some horsepower in there and they're stable right i mean it, yeah it feels yeah. like it wouldn't what would be done and hey maybe they could save it for for the future um kyle super producer kyle is is with us behind the scenes could you bump back to like one of the photos pulled back where we could see the whole truck because you mentioned okay it's got the 18 inch wheels with the 33s 33s aren't small tires no and they look tiny on this truck i mean that's I think that kind of puts in perspective just how big this truck is. It is a big truck. I mean, I the Raptor definitely feels bigger to drive just like day to day, but this is still a big truck. I think Chevy, um, the Chevy face, the sort of grill, the massive grill with the really slim headlights doesn't help make it look any smaller. And that's sort of the theme with all of their big trucks and SUVs now. Um, but it is a big truck. Well, I mean, that's I mean, that's the styling that's design language we're seeing from all the automakers right now with their trucks and even mm -hmm. into the SUV realm to some degree uh, where burly, boxy and rugged is in. And I mean, mm -hmm. it's certainly burly, boxy and rugged. Let me ask you about the ride, because I've been spending a fair amount of time recently in, in a fairly recent Silverado. Um, and I mean, trucks once upon a time rode like pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. Um, and they've come a long, long way just in the last, you know, 10 years, never mind the last 20. Um, with this upgraded suspension, and I know um like like TRX, Raptor, they have the they have the the bigger suspension, the the higher, the higher height, but it's they're also fairly softly sprung, so mm -hmm. it has a side effect. You end up getting a really some really comfortable on-road manners. Yeah. Is is this set up the same way or does this feel like more like a an HD truck with a harder suspension? It's not as soft as Raptor is, um, but it's still pretty soft compared to a standard Silverado. OK, on the road, it was I mean, it's it's about an hour and 20 minute drive from my house to to this park out here, um, all highway. So it was it was a surprisingly nice ride, like nice and quiet. You get a little bit of noise from the off-road tires uh, but nothing too bad it's actually a really nice truck to drive uh daily i had no issues with this thing other than just it being a little bit big um but that's just the price you pay for getting a truck like this so it's a it's actually a really nice daily driver sure D do you know offhand what you were getting fuel mileage wise running around city oh gosh no uh probably nothing great it has to be <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's teens I mean, low it's... 20s maybe uh i don't know i'd have to look but it yeah. it's not yeah it's a I, it's a big v8 i can't remember i can't remember what the official ratings are um no I mean, but i, I mean look. again though i mean if if you're getting if you're getting close to like 19 or 20 I, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, listeners across the pond would be like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, but when you're talking, I mean, this is this is what, two and a half tons, two tons, yeah, or two and a half truck. tons thereabouts. Yeah. Um, with a big V8. I mean, that's really not that it's not bad. bad. Yeah, all, all I will say I will say so. Uh, I like this trail a lot. And even though it's not like too crazy and I like this park a lot because it's just like the middle of nowhere in the Everglades. Basically you go out there and there's so much stuff to see in terms of like animals and whatever. And uh, so we went out and we, I actually have some pictures of uh, animals that we saw out there. Cause I guess it's close to, to breeding season still. It's I guess closer to uh, spring would be made. Look at season. that owl. Look at that owl. Yeah. We stopped and, just in the middle of the trail and he was there just staring at us. <laughs> that's that's like a total look. Oh my God, zero two bison. Yeah. He's probably like, what's all <laughs> that noise? Because that is a that V8 <laughs> just in the middle of nowhere, no other cars. Yeah, that was cool. And so then, I mean definitely uh, definitely a truck that you could enjoy just taking down 
uh, some smaller trails. I, I mean, I mean, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the off-road experience. Is it something that, that you would feel comfortable like to take you down some really windy trails or does it still have that kind of big, you know, I don't know if I should be here kind of feel to it. No, it's definitely a, it's definitely a truck you can take down some trails and be happy with. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel too big. It actually is a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit stiffer on the road than the mm -hmm. Raptor is. And it also feels a little bit stiffer, um, on the trail. So it definitely, it hits, it hits potholes and rocks a little bit harder than you might expect. Um, but it's a, it's a fine truck for, you know, some, as long as you have open space, I don't think tight trails would be good for this one. You can, you can always go down to the Colorado ZR2. And I think that's a much better truck for tighter stuff. Uh, but big open trails like the ones out here on the Everglades are, I think would be, would be good for the Silverado. The only, my only issue uh, that I noticed when I was out there driving, especially when I'm here looking at the animals, the alligators and, <laughs> you know, all the other stuff that was out there is that I, I like wish it was quieter. And really what I want is a Silverado EV ZR2, right? Like Ooh, just a totally, totally silent off-road truck, not going to scare the animals, not going to scare the nature away. We had some, we had a family of uh, raccoons run in front of the truck, like a few miles down the road. And I was like, I wanted to catch up to, to find them, like to see if I could take pictures of them. But man, just that as soon as you put lay into the throttle a little bit, that V8 just makes so much noise. It scares everything within away. a mile. Yeah. Well, you said Silverado EV ZR2, and I'm imagining like 10,000 heads of truck enthusiasts just exploded. <sighs> oh, how dare you get it? I'm, I'm totally with you. As I, as I get it's along great. in years, there are uh, times when I just, I, I want that little bit of peace, but Jeff, and you make mm -hmm. a, an astute point, the animals run away. Now that I live in a part of the country where deer are everywhere, uh -huh. if I'm out in the Mustang and they're coming up to the side of the road, I see them far enough ahead, clutch in a little wrap of the throttle. <laughs> they are gone, they, man. They're gone. It's like, Deer whistles, no, just just a nice loud V8 <laughs> sticking out the back. Yeah, it would be. I mean, I have this issue. I've had this issue not just in the Silverado, but I've taken the Raptor out there and the Rebel, and it's always the same thing. It is so deadly quiet out there in the middle of the Everglades that just a little bit of throttle in any of these big trucks with the V8s, and it just like echoes through the woods mm -hmm. and it just like scares everything i'm like i'm gonna i need to take a rivian out here or i need to wait till the silverado ev comes out i want to take the silverado ev out there and just sort of see the differences between how quiet it actually is versus just the v8 making a ton of noise and scaring all the animals i know exactly what you mean because i spent a fair amount of time uh when i was in south dakota in in the badlands badlands national park out there extraordinarily quiet to the point where you can hear the sound of an engine and you think, Oh, it's, it's just around this, this corner. And then yeah. like five minutes later, something finally shows up. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's, there are times when you just, just want a little bit of peace and quiet. Yeah, um, for sure. Kyle, I have a funny raccoon picture in there somewhere. Uh Oh, well, you know, this was the, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say it was the, it was, this was the family of raccoons we were chasing and, they they scattered away and and the mom ran up the tree and like i caught her through the tree kind of just staring at us and she, she was just a funny picture i don't know if it's in there or not but auto enthusiast auto journalist photographer extraordinaire and wildlife <laughs> photographer jeff perez everybody fantastic i gotta get a better lens i gotta get a better lens for the animals i'm all set up to shoot car pictures i don't know how to shoot animal pictures so yeah i've, I've got nice. I've I've got my Nikon that I I've just got I've just got the two factory lenses that it came with. I keep saying I'm going to upgrade, and I just haven't got around to it yet. Any any final thoughts on the uh, on the on the Bison? What surprised you about it? Um, it does have really good technology. Didn't really talk about the interior at all. Um, it has the new touchscreen, like totally updated interior that that comes with all the other Silverados this year. Uh, new touchscreen, the new infotainment system is really nice, really easy to use. Uh, bigger digital instrument cluster that's that's pretty configurable. You can sort of adjust it however you want. Um, and then just like really nice materials. I think when the, the Silverado came out, this generation especially, I th that people knocked it 
for its material quality and just how kind of scarce it was even on the top end. But um, this, this was a super nice truck, really nice leather, really nice materials, like tons of, you know, aluminum and metal fixtures everywhere. So in that sense, it was, it was really nice to just sit in for a long time. That That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I do have some experience with, with the, the GM products. It's like, this is a $55,000 truck and mm-hmm. I'm staring at like blank, flat, black plastic. And it's just yeah. ooh, kind of a shock. Um, yeah. Jeff, if I could take a, just a little segue here before we go off, because I have a great segue. You were talking about, you want your electric Silverado ZR2. Mm-hmm. Um, just a little shout out. Hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a little series from me at motorone.com talking about some, some items that I've discovered from my childhood as I'm going through my parents' home where they had a lot of things stored and among them. Now, if, if you're a child of the eighties or possibly the early nineties, you might remember these little electric off-roaders. Look at that called oh, stompers. Wow. Um, I, I totally forgot. I had these, um, these were kind of, these were a big thing back in the eighties where you don't control it. You, you just put a battery in it and you turn it on and there's your electric off-roader. And these things actually did pretty good off road. Um, I, I remember that ground clearance. It's all, it's, it's got <laughs> ground clearance. and come on. It's an AMC Eagle. Look at this. Yeah. And if, I've also got a little first gen Ranger here that I, that I found Ooh, from my I collection. Like that one. Um, but I'm going to be doing a little series at motor one. That's just talking about some of these, some of these older car themed toys and stompers are going to be among them. And Man, we were uh, just, I, w- I would love to get a lot of feedback on that. If, uh, yeah. if people want to see more about it, because guess what? I'm surrounded by a bunch of toys. I'm a big kid. <laughs> we were talking before the podcast started. I remember the big ones for me were the penny racers, the little one, the wind up ones, you put the penny on the back and you pull them back and they, you know, do wheelies and stuff. But then I just remembered they had these hot wheels with batteries in them and you charge them up on this charging port and then they go and you just put them on the track and they go, go, go. I don't remember what those were called, but now I need to find them because I had a million of those things. Those were, I I I love those. Yeah, those are fun. I'm going to have to find them. That's that sounds pretty cool, but yeah, check that out here coming up hopefully in the next couple weeks on motor one.com provided I eventually get some time to get some photos and and get some good (laughs) things written up. But since we, I, since I knew you were talking about bison, it's like, okay, this, this might be a fun little thing. Um, these things, they've, they've gotten fairly collectible. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have them. Nice. Well, what else, we wrap what up? else we got? I, I think, I mean, unless, unless you want to hear me talking about driving a 20 year old Subaru that, <laughs> um, that it, it does all right off road, but I mean, it's, it's a 20 year old Subaru Forester. So I'm not, uh, Solid. I'm I'm not I'm not conquering Moab by any means, but I'm not chasing raccoons away either because it's actually really quiet. Yeah. Well, next week, like I said, Seth and Brandon and them should be back. They've been in. Uh, if you go on Motor One and follow our story, oh, there's the raccoon. Look at oh, him. we found the raccoon. That's Where Rocket, she... and he looks pissed. Yeah, she was she was just <laughs> staring at us. She had two little babies with her, and she was staring at us like, "Get away, get away from the that, babies." That's Rocket looking at the truck like, yeah, I'm getting those wheels. I'm getting those wheels. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, but next week, stay yep. tuned. Uh, follow Moto One on, on Instagram. Seth is out in Italy doing the Milli Miglia. Is that how you say oh, it? With, yeah, he, he's going to have some Astor, great stuff. With Alfa Romeo. Yeah, he's going to have some good stuff. So, oh. yeah, thanks for tuning in. Chris, thanks for joining me today. It was a lot of happy fun. Happy to be here. Always happy and to I be will, here. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye, everybody. See ya.